I was cleaning out my hard drive the other day and found a huge folder in my videos directory from when I had this plugin for League of Legends called Icon. Icon, which doesn't exist anymore, let you enter giveaways for riot points and skins and stuff. I never won anything, but I actually ended up using one of the other features, which was automatic highlights. Uh, basically, at the end of the game, you'd get a playback of your major kills, deaths, and assists. It was a fun way to review a, a good game. Uh, the only problem was that, regardless of whether or not you chose to save or share them, uh, they would be stored on your computer in these hundreds of 15 second clips that amounted to something like 20 gigabytes. Well, I deleted all that, but before I did, I decided to go back and watch some of my old games. This was where I remembered both why I loved League of Legends, and also why I drop it every time I come back. Over the course of seven years, I went from being actually addicted to it to groaning every time I even saw footage. This bothered me for a while. I remember saying in 2016 that I could probably play League forever. Uh, and that was true. I could play that game forever. But League today is not that game. It's something very different. It's the nature of persistently updated games that they will inevitably morph into something unrecognizable, obviously. Now, a part of me can accept that, but another part of me laments that from a lot of different angles. Uh, from a competitive angle, let's look at the polar opposite. A game like Melee, which was released in 2001 and is still going strong. One of the coolest things you see in cases like Melee is the continuous evolution of strategy. You have characters like Pikachu or Yoshi who were considered mid or even low tier, but all it took was a single player for them to jump up in the tier list after over a decade. Stuff like that is rare, but you see it in other games that just have the time to sit there and culture like Marvel or Third Strike. You can make arguments for and against continuous balance patches, but it does take away from that magic of using a garbage character to win if they can just be buffed up. Maybe I have a unique perspective on that because uh, I used to play a lot of those types of characters in League, and taking people by surprise with a character like Mordekaiser, original Mordekaiser, and uh, Galio was such like a cool underdog feeling, like you were living out your own underdog story. <laughs> Those characters don't exist anymore, actually. Uh, they have been reworked into unrecognizable versions of themselves that rob them of everything that I really liked, honestly. Uh, when you fundamentally alter a game as much as that, you do lose the people who love those characters. You lost me a little bit. My appreciation for your game has lessened because those things are just gone. I run this channel uh, kind of dedicated to older games, so you might guess that I am a big proponent of archiving and preservation of games, which is kind of a weird thing when you're talking about these sorts of titles. Moving on is a part of life, but we rarely think of it in regards to art. Do you remember when there was a fire at the Notre Dame Cathedral? People were crying because there was a possibility that these, these priceless works of art could be lost forever. And there's, there's a certain selfishness to that, that I think you have to admit, that you want to be able to relive those experiences uh, just like you did the first time you saw that, that, that work, that, that work of, of that painting, that statue, that sculpture. But there's also uh, a more altruistic aspect to, to that, that, that grief. 
inevitably when you have these conversations about preservation and restoration uh, someone is going to make the point that we're doing this to make sure that future generations can also experience these these works and 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 these these pieces of, of history of culture maybe you can come to terms with the fact that it will live on in your memory but what about your kids what about their kids la pieta was completed in 1499 you can still go see it you cannot play dark spore you can't play pt those games are gone they're locked away i know more people are probably upset about the latter and rightfully so but think about dark spore think about tron evolution or any other game that's been uh, blocked off from access uh, as as like a be treated as entirely a commercial product and not as as something that people put like time and effort and passion into even if it was just a licensed game like like tron Think about all of these server-based online games that have just had the plug pulled from them and haven't gotten legacy servers. Regardless of what you think of them, these are pieces of history. Big teams of people work on these games and someone enjoys them. Every game is going to be somebody's favorite. It's going to mean something to someone and it's just lost. It's gone. To circle back to League, isn't the concept itself kind of odd? Uh, I remember hearing someone, I don't remember who, but they were they said that they had this this idea in mind, this perception at one point that Riot had a goal, an end goal for what League of Legends was eventually supposed to be, and every patch was working towards that goal. But then the more they played the game, they realized that there is no goal, there is no grand vision that's being worked towards. Uh, Riot is never going to hit a point where they can, they can, they can say, okay, that's enough. This is enough. This is good. We can walk away now. And that's weird for like a piece of art, right? Isn't that odd? Because that's what we're talking about, right? This is a piece of art. How many artworks are never supposed to be complete? Not unfinished. There's plenty of unfinished art, but like something that is meant to be continually altered for, for no other reason than just for the sake of changing it. Ad infinitum, just forever. It's not one massive painting, like a huge open world game. Uh, it's, it's a large painting that is constantly painted over. You can buy a game and all of its DLC and all of its expansions and say, okay, this is the completed game with all of the content. I hope that didn't. But you can't do that here. So I'll ask, what is the complete form of League of Legends? These continuously patched online games never exist in their totality at one point. It's only by experiencing their entire lifespans that you can even begin to approach what they are they're impossible to critically analyze like you can't do a review for league of legends you can't i think ign has like two league reviews because they have to update it after like two years and then they just gave up because it's it's pointless you can do an initial review of a game and, it, and, and its content and all that for the consumer, but if you want to critically analyze one of these games, League or Overwatch or TF2, you 
can't. You can kind of retrospect it, but if you want to take an entirely uh, an, a, 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 a point of view that's as objective as possible, can you really look at a single slice of a game and say that this is representative of the entire product when it's existed in so many different forms? I feel like this is making less and less sense. <laughs> There's a big theme in Persona 1 that because most people only know you in one context and are viewing you through their own perspective, that you might have an idea of your identity, but to the person who only had one interaction with you, it's completely... that's that's a completely different thing. If I bumped into you by accident and you were super rude to me, you might be a really nice person 99% of the time when you were just having a bad day. But to me, because that's the only time I've ever known you, you are... your whole identity is just... you're a jerk. And that's how... that's how people exist, right? We're, we're like... Electrons whose positions are only decided based on when you're observing them. Uh, if you pick up League for a month, you're just experiencing one small segment of what that game is. And I don't mean content-wise, I mean like its whole identity, what the community is like, uh, what the latest release is, who you play with at that time. The, the specifics of what is balanced that patch. My perspective of the game is completely different from someone who only started playing a year or two ago. I've had this experience with, with friends who tell me that when I would play League with them that I was like an out-of-touch boomer who just wanted top lane to be the same way that it was in 2014 because I love that. <laughs> and um, for me, like, that... That game... Doesn't exist anymore. It only exists... In... My memory. I can't have that back. It's a lot like a person. Did you ever look up to a parent or... Authority figure... As a child... And then learn things... Later in life... That changed your perspective on them. Was there identity as you perceived it before when you were a child any less valid or worth believing in? Art can be as living and breathing as a human being. Is a human life ever complete? I mean, like, we die. Is a game like League of Legends ever complete? Well, one day, it too will die, and I doubt that at that point, Riot will ever consider it finished. And so, it will only be left in our memories, in our YouTube videos, in our subreddits, kind of a parallel to ourselves impermanent and maybe in a way for the same reason valuable <laughs>